Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, news and commentary from the heartland, and I'm your host, Bill Stone. Well, today is the third part in a series that was dealing with the Second Amendment and guns, the first part of which I talked about the New Zealand mosque shootings, the second one I talked about why more guns in private hands leads to less crime, and you can find links to both of those in my description box below. Today, however, we're going to talk about, in this final chapter, the, uh, discuss the intent of the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution. The Second Amendment to the United States Constitution reads, A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. A lot of people have trouble understanding what that means in the modern times. Well, I'll tell you. The Second Amendment isn't for the National Guard. In modern times, people tend to get hung up on the words well-regulated militia, and that's because the meanings of those words have changed some over time. When the, second, the Constitution was written and the Second Amendment was written, well-regulated meant that people practiced with their guns. Regulation didn't mean, you know, laws or regulations as we consider them today. It meant that people practiced with their guns, that they were well, well regulated. They knew how to do it. And they did this so as to be ready to respond to a conflict should one arise. The militia, however, was not what we think of as today. The Constitution does not intend for a standing military to be held in peacetime. It provides only one to be constituted in the time of war. Today's gigantic military, global military, along with the military industrial complex that was worn by President Eisenhower more than 50 years ago, who, by the way, if you don't know, Eisenhower was the commanding general of all the European forces in World War II, that standing army is a complete anathema to the Constitution and its intent. A constitutional militia isn't a state militia, nor is it in modern times the National Guard. If you read your history, it is clear from the writings of those who wrote the Constitution that the word militia was literally anyone who had or might pick up a gun of any kind. Really, that's what a militia meant. So a well-regulated militia was any group of people who had guns and they got together in order to practice with them together. Such militias were often military or paramilitary in structure, but they were not entities of a government. They were just a group of people who had guns and got together to practice with them. The constitutional intent is that in the event of war, an army can be brought together not by a standing peacetime army, nor by state-sponsored militias, nor by the National Guard, but by private militias made up of anyone who had a gun and got together to practice with them, even if it was only one person. That's why the Second Amendment says a well-regulated militia with well-regulated meaning practice and militia meaning anyone who wants to be in one, even if it's a militia of only one person. And in any case, in 2008, the U.S. Supreme Court did in fact confirm that the Second Amendment guarantees the rights of individuals to own firearms and not just militaries nor militias. The Second Amendment isn't for the National Guard. The Second Amendment is also not about hunting. When the U.S. Constitution was written, it was taken for granted that firearms would be used for hunting because it only made sense. Otherwise, you're left with bows and arrows and spears and knives and a whole lot of hard work. Hunting with firearms was just a given. But the Second Amendment isn't about hunting. The Second Amendment isn't also only about self-defense. When the Constitution was written, it was taken for granted that firearms would be used for self-defense. It only made sense in a world in which police could be hours or days or weeks away, and that half the country was a wilderness filled with predators, animals, and humans. So self-defense is only one of the many reasons that the Second Amendment exists. And if you want to look at my video yesterday, More Guns, Less Crime, link below, that's where I talk about it. But the Second Amendment isn't only for self-defense. The Second Amendment also doesn't only apply to single-shot firearms like the muskets and rifles, well, not even rifles, that were carried at the time of the American Revolution. Contrary to popular belief, the first repeating flintlock rifle was invented in the 1600s. In North America, the Cookson gun 
which had been invented sometime prior to uh, 1690, we're not exactly certain when, had been sold in Boston, Massachusetts by 1756. The Second Amendment was adopted on December 15th, 1791. So December 15th, by the way, is celebrated as Bill of Rights Day in the United States. Even if you're an American and didn't know, I prefer that over the, the 4th of July, frankly. And in any case, repeating firearms had been in Massachusetts 20 years prior to the Declaration of Independence and 35 years prior to the adoption of the Second Amendment. Clearly, the Second Amendment isn't intended to, to only apply to single-shot firearms, but to repeating firearms as we have today. And in any case, if you're going to argue that the Second Amendment only applies to 18th century technology, then logically you must argue that it also applies to the entire Constitution and Bill of Rights, meaning it only applies to 18th century technology, which would mean that the Constitution applies to almost nothing that we have in modern day life. The real purpose and the real reason for the Second Amendment is revolution. The real reason for the Second Amendment, what it really means, is that it keeps our citizens as well armed as our government's military, so that should that government become tyrannical, the people have a fighting chance to win it. That's why the phrase, being necessary to the security of a free state, is in the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment is intended to allow any man, woman, or responsible child to go armed to form militias unconnected with their government so that in the event that government became tyrannical, they could overthrow it. Like it or not, that's the intent of the Second Amendment. And anyone who tells you differently is either ignorant, a propagandist, often in the guise of K-12 through teachers, college instructors, and almost anyone in the press anywhere in the world, or a would-be tyrant themselves such as every single congressman, senator, president, or judge currently in office, because every single one actually uh, does not, not a single one, actually upholds their oath of office in which they swore to protect and defend the Constitution. Every single one, including your favorite, is a power-mad sociopathic narcissist who spends more than 99% of their time violating rather than defending the Constitution, and that includes the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment is a revolution. And so, that would be, I guess, all that I have to say about that, fairly short and sweet. And so, thanks for watching. If you like what I'm doing, please do like, sub, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and to tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. And I certainly appreciate your support. Rather, be a subscribe star in my PayPal tip jar or a link on my website where you can support me further, all of which are linked to below. So thanks for watching Tales from SYL Ranch. And remember, for a breath of fresh air, watch Tales from SYL Ranch. News and commentary from the heartland. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.